Dry land salinity is caused by a water imbalance where recharge is greater than discharge from the system. Historically, vegetation in the landscape used the rainfall effectively and the system was in balance. Perennial pastures were planted into the system and some of these were also using the rainfall effectively, essentially maintaining the water balance within the system. In some cases, with a change to annual crops and pastures and control of summer weeds, the water balance has changed with an increase in recharge across the landscape. This increase in recharge results in a rising water table bringing salts closer to the surface. This can result in surface ponding, capillary rise, evaporation and bare saline scalded areas increasing over time. There are two different types of dry land salinity systems operating across the Kurong region. These have recently become more apparent with the installation of moisture probes and salinity sensors in the soil and submersible level transmitters on existing monitoring wells. The first is salinity as a result of capillary rise and evaporation, whereas the second is salinity occurring as a result of water locking. Both systems are a result of a rising saline water table, however the amount of water table rise varies greatly across the landscape. Over the winter period, rain falls across the landscape causing a slight increase in the water table. As the water table rises, it brings salts with it. Once spring arrives and the rainfall stops, the water table begins to recede. As the water table recedes, some of the salts remain, increasing the salinity in the soil above the water table. Over summer, the soil dries out, allowing moisture to wick up towards the surface. The moisture brings salts with it and in extreme cases, it reaches the surface often in lower lying areas of the paddock. These deposited salts result in scalding at the soil surface. During autumn, if rainfall is high enough, it can dilute these salts and wash them back down into the soil. This reduces the concentration of salt at the surface and in the topsoil. To reduce the impact of this process, maintaining ground cover on susceptible soils over the late spring and summer period is very important. Ground cover provides a barrier, protecting the soil surface and lowering the temperature, subsequently reducing the severity of the wicking effect. Over the winter period, rain falls across the landscape, causing a substantial rise in the water table. As the water table rises, it brings salts with it, filling the soil profile from the bottom up. In lower lying areas, this rising water table often intercepts with water that is filling the soil profile from the top down. This results in a waterlogged soil with salts moving freely throughout the profile. During spring, the water table starts to recede, leaving behind salts at the surface and in the subsurface of the soil. Over summer, some wicking may occur, but generally it is only movement of salts at depth and not to the surface. During autumn and early winter, natural rainfall events will dilute these salts and wash them back down into the profile prior to the water table rising in midwinter and the process beginning again. This process can be mitigated by drying the surrounding area out as much as possible over the spring and summer period in an attempt to draw down the water table while maintaining ground cover to reduce the wicking effect during summer. In addition, ensuring there is green leaf area present at the onset of autumn to utilise water when it starts falling can reduce the amount of recharge locally. Avoiding grazing during winter on low, wet or saline zones to minimise bare areas is also beneficial. Work is continuing to further understand these processes and determine if farmers can have an impact at a local level through individual site management by reducing the water table at the local level and through broad-scale regional action at the landscape scale. <laughs>